is an unspoiled network podcast. This is Unscrupled, covering Buffy the Vampire Slayer, season six, episodes eight, nine, and ten. What are they, bitches? Tabla Rasa, Smash, and Wrecked. All right. Hey guys, did you miss us? In these episodes, some people fuck and some people fuck up. Welcome to Unscrew. So who the fuck are you? Oh, I'm bitches. Who the fuck are you? It's been forever. I don't remember anymore. Huh. Someone cast a spell with weird pink flowers, and now I think I'm Natasha. That's yeah. what my that's what my Netflix login says. So. <laughs> hey, that's what my Hulu login says. I know. I think we're both Natasha. <laughs> we're both Natasha. All right. Hi, y'all. It's been a while. So, um, quick update. Things have happened. Uh, I got a new job. Yay. We work together now. Yeah, we do. But, like, um, also there were holidays and shit, so it just, it took a bit of getting some, my feet under me and some adjustment to the new reality before we could take on this fantabulous project that we've been doing for, this is going to be our fourth year. Holy shit, we've been doing this for four years? Yeah. It seems like we started, like, yesterday. I know. We started in September 2016. Wow. So, and we're getting towards the end. Like, we're halfway through season six, which is the second to last season. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, we're back. We watched all three episodes. I'm not entirely sure why bitches wanted to cover three episodes at once, but... Because we only covered one last time and we need to get back on on sync with Angel, just saying. Sure. (laughs) I mean, um... Shut up. Could have done one... Like, I would have been okay with that first one. By itself. Fine. But yeah, these were these were some good episodes. Um, there was a lot of angst working through. There was a lesbian breakup, which is this is by far the least drama, least dramatic lesbian breakup I've ever seen in my life. You know I'm not wrong. I'm trying to think of an exception and I just can't. It's <laughs> like, you know, guys, this was a lot of drama, but I mean, you know, yeah, it's Tara was like, oh my god, I love Tara now. Right. I've been wanting I to love Tara love. for so long, and like this is the first time we're really getting some agency. Yeah, some real plot movement from Tara. Mm-hmm. Um, Willow's fucking up, and like I'm, I'm a little perturbed at how quickly everything went downhill. But at the same time, it's like okay. You're dealing with it. and The thing is, it wasn't quickly. It just, that last slide into actual, well, we're going to talk about that at great length, but that yeah. part happened real fast. But the other part where Willow lost track of magic versus morality happened slowly over several seasons. Yeah, and I get and that. And Tara's been saying it the whole fucking time. She has. <laughs> um, it, what's, I didn't, I, my least favorite was the last one, so... Yeah. Uh, and we're going to talk about that just because I don't think that really fits with what who Willow is, but... It doesn't fit with the rules they've made about magic. I mean, I'm more about, like, fuck it, let's talk about it. Um, Willow's drug of choice is control. Mm-hmm. So I don't see her going to this guy, Rask, as it were. Mm. And uh, wanting to have a heroin LSD experience. I see her going to um, Rask and saying, like, hey, all my magic's out. I need to recharge because I can't control my life. <clears throat> well, yes, that is what would happen, except that they may, they invented the idea that magic is, feels good. And the thing is, there is nothing to support that in any other part of this series. No one has ever been, like, semi-orgasmic or way the fuck stoned out after doing magic before this point in the series. And it pisses me off because it's fucking with continuity because someone wanted to make an after-school special. I don't... Okay. I See, if I if I was a, a witch in the Buffyverse... Right. 
the, the thing I would be working on is how to get high by just doing the chemical things that drugs do. That okay. would be my project. So, so you'd be rasp. <laughs> I, I don't know that I would be rask. I would be like, okay, like, what are the risks of these drugs that are super fun, like heroin and cocaine and MDMA, right? Okay. So let's see, how can we make, give ourselves the high and also not have the danger using magic? Because, like, can I control this on a hormonal level and just release all your serotonin and then have it build up in the two hours you have to sleep between um, <laughs> the peaking and you know, having to be a person. Huh. That's, that's how I would spend my time. So the thing about feeling good and about magic, everything has a price. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah. Willow's price for doing fun magic, like fucking around with people at the bronze was she had a hangover and then she wanted to have the fun without the hangover. Or only she somehow mysteriously didn't have the fun, just had, was stoned on a ceiling for a while. It's, uh, it doesn't, I get that that's what you would do, except not be rasped. Um, but it still doesn't jive with any of the rules that they have made about magic so far. Okay. I'm, I'm not, maybe I'm he's just a dangerous guy. Honestly, not say that. that perturbed about it because <clears throat> the rules of magic before is like whatever needs to happen happens. Depictions of addiction are very important to me. Uh -huh. And I think they took the cheap way out by making it heroin. Okay. I think they could have explored how power is an addiction. Yeah. And that it is every bit as insidious as hard drugs. Or how Willow's constant need to please, regardless of what the consequences of that are, mm -hmm. that's an addiction and a problem. I mean... Amy was like, oh, I wish my dad would just forget the last three years. And Willow was like, oh, I can handle that. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, wait a minute, morality. He shouldn't have to forget the last three years. They, you should work this out the hard way. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, let's, let's go back to the beginning, shall we? So mm -hmm. we open with Xander and Anya and Tara and Willow sitting around the dinner table and uh, them having a conversation about the fact of Buffy being back. And kind of belly aching over her having been in heaven. Right. Which they really should be doing. I mean, okay, it, it's yeah. been it is it's been fault. six weeks for us, but it's also But it was the day before. It was the day before for them, and they're really processing like what they actually did, and Buffy's finally been honest with them mm -hmm. about what this has cost her. So, like, but this, like, that doesn't, they can even stay on the Buffy topic because Willow is such a fucking, like, what's the word? Addict. Uh, I don't want to go there, but. She has a one-track mind yeah, and it's magic. Yeah, and she's like, well, there's magic so I can make her forget. And yeah. this, this sparks uh, one of those lesbian cold wars that happen in, like, less than four minutes. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's, that that's totally is a thing. Like, that's a thing that lesbians do better than any other parent. Yeah, I mean, other so, people can do it, but not like us. Like you can just you can just feel the temperature in the room dropping. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, because Tara totally calls Willow out on it in front of everyone. Yeah. And she gives me zero fucks at this point. And Xander's like, I'm going to fuck the fuck off. And Anya's like, I'm going to fuck off with you. Yeah. We're just going to not deal with this. How is Xander the house? most well-adjusted person in this universe? This is not okay. Well, the thing is, is that well-adjusted? I. It's comparatively, yes. Okay, yeah. But it's like, okay. <laughs> this you, is a bar graph. <laughs> 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 it's like, wow, you guys have some things to talk about. I will give you privacy in which to do that. Right. <laughs> and, yeah, it's like Xander doesn't have to have his shit together. It's just that but he's, he does. he's got his shit together relative to everyone else. Um, Anya's got some abandonment issues, clearly. Well, yeah, but, I mean, yeah. she she reveled in them for a thousand years, so I think she has a right Well, to she's them. also uh, reacting to Giles. <laughs> Um, leaving. His so. on-again, off-again departure. Yeah. Um, 
So, yeah, there's that. And uh, Willow is not taking things well. Tara is surprisingly put together, but still, like, Tara's two-dimensional at this point. She's not three-dimensional, and that kind of bothers me. Well, and Here's a, well, to, to that point, is Tara in college this year? Do we even know? Yeah. Does Tara have any friends ever? Yeah. Does she do anything other than take care of Dom? Right. Um, which is, we're going to get into, like, the misappropriation of divorce later, but... <laughs> Ooh. Because... Uh, of all the people who, like, should not have been staying in the house, it's Willow. Like, Willow should have been the one that they told to fuck off, and Tara should have stayed around. Well, no one else is acknowledging her addiction. Right. And Willow doesn't think she has a problem. And when no one is supporting you, and the person who has the problem doesn't think they have the problem, and are being backed up by everyone else in the in their lives saying... Oh no, let let's throw some justifications at you. You don't have a problem. Right. Then they 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 feel fully supported and justified because yeah. they're getting those things. So, yeah, I, that was never gonna happen. They, I, no one was ready to face Willow's issue. Right. I I just I loved Tara finally laying down the law and saying, like, look, you have a fucking problem and I need you to stop. Mm -hmm. And this is an extinction level event for this relationship, and you need to understand that. She even let her off the hook one week. Right. Go one week without magic. And the bitch couldn't even go half a day. She went like 30 minutes. Yeah. Well, she Probably went the whole night. night. So, but it was late. They went to bed. She like, was sleeping. Sleeping doesn't count. Yeah. It, it was seriously like a couple hours, maybe. Yeah. So, uh, morning comes and uh, Tara and Dawn are going to school. And like, can we talk about how Dawn is acting like someone half her age? Um, okay. Because it's it's bugging me. So, on one hand, it's bad writing. Yeah. On the other hand, Dawn's had a lot of trauma recently. Yeah, I get that. And that can make you regress. But they don't they don't ever address that, so I think it's just... I, I totally get that it could make you regress, but you know what I'm not buying uh, it, as part of the regression? Is uh, the teenage bitchiness being gone with it. Yeah, she's way too sweet. She yeah. should be snapping at people. Right. So I would I would I would buy the regression if the teenage bitchiness stayed and now she was acting like a child but also was had the attitude of a teenager. Hmm. I think that would just be more Cuz I've seen I've seen see teenagers it. regress and need okay. more tender love and care. Mm -hmm. But the the bitchiness tends to stay. <laughs> He's like, I need a hug, you cunt. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, um, and I like, we should also talk about the fact that these people are 21. <laughs> oh, and man. that's so much responsibility. Like, I, I get how Willow got where she is. She's, she has to lead a gang of vampire hunters. She's got to raise a teenage kid. She's got a relationship. And she's compensating. Right. And she's like, this is this is the part of the addiction story that's missing from this in that, like, describing how uh, the part of an addiction actually works for you at the beginning in that it shaves off. Hi, dog. <laughs> we have a dog next door that has a perpetual cold. Yeah, it's terrible. So. Also, apologies, guys. We are uh, recording in my man cave. Which I think will sound pretty good, but I I haven't tested the echo levels and it's yeah. an experiment, guys. I, guys, I know, I know that I've been like I keep talking about the audio quality and I make these small improvements and then like it's an old ass house. There's very little I can do. <laughs> okay, back to Buffy. I I, I want to be honest with our listeners because they're sticking with us after we've been gone for six weeks. So. I agree. However, you were making a really important point and I want you to finish it. Okay, so, so... Willow's under a fuck ton of stress and no one acknowledges it. Right. Willow's really stepped up and mm -hmm. she's using magic to kind of bridge the gap. Yep. To uh, keep her sanity and keep herself... Yeah, make those small tasks a little bit easier. You know, the way a glass of wine can. Right. And that's, that's another thing about addiction is you get, like... People don't understand what it's like to be without your addicted to thing. And you think that, well, it's that's fine because where I am now is worse than where I would be if I had to deal with the not thing. 
right? Mm. So, yeah, that's a piece of this story that's missing. In the, it's clearly laid out that Willow has all this responsibility, but it's not explicitly stated that this is why she's leaning so hard on magic. Right. Um, also, the fact that a, a fuck ton of magic did solve the last big problem they had. A fuck ton of magic have solved, like, most of the problems they have. I mean, yeah. she's not... It's not like she decided to become a sword juggler. I mean, she went for the thing that has the that is most likely to protect them. Mm-hmm. That that's why it pisses me off that they turned it into plain old heroin. It's important to see that these tools are inherently dangerous. Right. In and of themselves because of how powerful they are because power is addictive. Right. And so dangerous. This was um yeah, so the next morning, Willow's wearing a towel. Well, she's wearing two towels, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I have long hair. I never did learn the, the hair turban. Oh, it's not hard. I can teach you. Mm-hmm. And I don't have hair. But sometimes you just don't want to drip. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's got the hair turban on, and she's got a towel on, and they're supposed to be walking out the door. And she's like, oh, I'll just meet you there. And uh, Tara, uh, Tara and Dawn uh, go to school. Go to school or whatever. And Tara rolls her eyes real hard because it's like, oh my god, how did I become the adult in this relationship? Yeah. I remember having a partner. Mm-hmm. And uh, Willow immediately changes her clothes magically, and then mm-hmm. decides to go back to that old well of forgetting shit. Yeah. I'm just going to do the spell right this time, and then Tara will love me forever until I have to wipe her mind again. Right. Because, you know, that's love. She's 21. Like... I get that she's 21, but even at my most fucked up, I would never mind wipe a brain rape victim. Yeah, that's... I mean, I'm not saying she's... That's the thing that makes it egregious. I mean, I could see thinking you're doing the doing a better thing if the person hadn't just been violently brain raped. Yeah, my point here <laughs> is like the fuck ups we the relationship fuck ups we had in our early twenties. Mm-hmm. This is a lot. The stakes are a lot higher for Willow, and she doesn't like she doesn't have any point of reference, so she doesn't mm-hmm. know that. And she's never been the mean one, right? She's used to being the doormat, right? And I'm, I'm happy that she's not doormatting anymore, but I'm not happy that she's abusing her partner. Right. This is abuse. This is violent abuse. It is. It would be less abusy if she smacked her around. Right. So, she, le- like an idiot, she leaves the uh, cellophane of flowers next to the fire when she burns it. Yeah, willow has got some righteous ADD. Yep. And then, what else is happening? This is, this is where we have the, the loan shark, right? Yeah, they go to the, the magic shop to do that. And, yeah, Spike is... Spike's in trouble because a loan shark wants him to pony up, like, 70-some-odd kittens. Because they can't just use money. I do enjoy how much they, like, talk about, like, why don't you just fucking use money, you assholes? Uh-huh. That's fun for me. I, it's like, we're going to acknowledge how absurd this is. I I like my headcanon in that like, cuddle parties are a thing in the vampire world, and you can't it's just rude to not have enough kittens for everybody to cuddle. So that's why they're, that's why they trade in kittens, because that shit's important. Headcanon accepted on the merits of adorableness. I, I know, can you imagine like, uh, the loan shark having like, what if he's having a giant party? Yeah. Where he's gonna like try and get some investors into his new project, and he's just and he's gotta gonna... have enough kittens. Yeah, they're not gonna eat them, guys. Right, eating is not on the table, the actual table that's covered in kittens. No, yeah. it's just snuggles. Super, <laughs> the super rich investor likes Siamese, which he's specifically. Yeah, I like, mean Siamese are fucking cute. They they can be bitches though because they're so inbred, but yeah, they can be adorable, especially the little tiny ones with their big. Freaking eyes. And yeah, my mom has ears. a Siamese, and she's stupid as hell, and she's lovely, and I love her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they get me. Just saying. Lady I mean, and the uh, ha- what got it right. I, oh, yeah, the racist cats. So. Yes. Um, yeah, guys, this, like, this loan shark is, like, he's got a big investor meeting, and he needs as many kittens as possible so that everyone can have cuddles and be, like, amenable to spending money. You and know? there's a deadline. Exactly. And Spike is not paid up on his debt. So, yep. um, yeah. So we, we, I think we can skip over the, 
Buffy and Spike fight scene because I've, I've kind of seen this shit before. Yeah, I don't. Don't it, care. We kissed. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. Okay, we did, but we're not doing it again. Oh, yeah, we are. Okay, maybe right now. Fine. It's, there, we covered it. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the Buffy Spike bicker is just not interesting to me. They keep doing it the same way every time, and fine. Joss is trying to establish, I don't know, her being conflicted inside about what she needs versus what she I wants. Think, I think he's just trying to make sure that this is fresh on the mind. Like, this is probably a studio note. It's like, what if someone hasn't seen the last episode? So they have to have this fight at least once an episode, so you know where to stand. Oh. You see why? Yeah. You see why I don't like. <laughs> wow. Yeah. God damn it! That pisses me off. Uh huh. I hate the studio overlords. Well, they didn't know binging was going to be a thing twenty years. Yeah, ago. they didn't, and there wasn't really like this was <clears throat> torrenting was just now becoming big. Like they. These were the days of Napster, you guys. Right. Oh my god. You had to if you wanted. To, like DVDs of seasons was very very new, and they $60 never sixty dollars a season. You guys, they never expected that people would like buy them and see them for the first time. So they were like, "Yeah, okay, fine." Um, so yeah, anyway, that's why they I have think the that's same fight on. again. Um, so this loan, he's into this loan shark for like sixty Siamese kittens, and um, yeah, so everyone gathers at the magic shop. Spike wears a ridiculous tan suit. It was brown. Okay, it was brown. It, it just looks a, tan because of all the... But it has a bow tie, you guys, and yeah. a vest. Right. Like, seriously. I'm, I don't... Like, is it the 20s? Is that what's happening now? He needed a boater. I Sure. And I think he just went to a thrift shop, so... Yeah, he got Grandpa's suit. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fair. So... Yeah, and uh, they're all at the magic shop, and Willow's spell takes off, but a spark from the fireplace catches... Uh, the whole bag. The whole ass bag. She was just trying to make Buffy forget heaven, and Tara forget anger. Right. And then it happens, and everybody forgets. So everybody falls out, and falls down, and passes out. And this was actually kind of cute. This was actually This reminded me of Buffy season one. Yeah. Where it was just like, let's have a fun idea and run with it. I like that they found, in this episode, they found a way to have a fun idea and run with it and also interweave the overarching plot. Right. Like, this had everything to do with what's going on in the, you know, big plot, but was still self-contained and fun. Right. So, their conclusions when they wake up is because uh, Willow is wearing Xander's coat, they must be dating. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Anya and Giles were sitting together, and so they were snuggling because that's where they passed out. So they assume that they must be a couple. Yes. Neither Buffy nor Dawn have any identifying things except for Dawn's necklace. Yeah, Buffy, why don't you carry ID? For Christ's sake. I know you're a white woman and everything, but what if you get pulled over? I don't know. Like, I think it's like, what if... it? Me putting myself in her shoes... I don't. If a vampire does kill me, I mm-hmm. don't want him to be able to find out where I live. That's fair, but there's things you can do about that. And also, I don't know. I remember 2001, and I remember always having my ID on me because it was scary. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Uh, who else is there? Uh, That's it. Oh, Spike. Spike. Spike is on the counter, so he thinks he works there. And this was really, like, this was really Freudian, the way, like, he has a fight with Giles because he thinks he's, he thinks they're father and son. Yeah. Yeah. And he thinks his name is Randy. That's Why don't you just call me horny Giles? Or desperate for a shag Giles. Yeah. This, <laughs> how old was James Marston at this? Like, 45. I know, and, like, I think <laughs> Anthony Stewart Head was, like, probably in his 50s, so. I think he might have been in his late 40s at that point. He might have been, like, 48, but they were of an age. Yeah. But they dress, they dress Giles older. Yeah. And that's it. That's the only difference. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, with these weird, wacky conclusions, they draw, and then they open the door, and there's fucking vampires. Yeah, yeah. And they're a business, so vampires can totes come in. Right. 
And so I thought, like, the whole confusion about what the vampires want and all of that, I thought that was really well done. Yeah. Like, they want spikes! Let's give them these! (laughs) Yeah, that was cute. Uh, The cutest part was Tara and Willow flirting for the first time across the room, though. Yeah, and the way, and, like, just Willow, like, yeah, I think I'm realizing some things about myself. Also, I think I'm pretty gay. (laughs) It's like, you're gay. You're right. super gay for that Tara chick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you are. And then, okay, so they split up. Uh, Joan and Randy mm-hmm. go to fight the vampires. I like that she picked Joan. I I thought she picked Joyce. I think Joan is an homage to Joyce. I think it is too, but I don't know. I think it's a name that sounded both like comfortable, yet... Kind of like her too, right? Yeah. Okay. And it was um, my grandma's name, so I'm partial. Yeah. So Tara and Willow and Xander and Don all flee by the sewers. Anya and uh, Giles decide to defend this shop, where mm-hmm. they're starting to have couples fights, which was just like this. I didn't like this. Why didn't you like them having I don't couples fights? No, it's just. Well, I mean, they don't actually like each other. I just don't think these two have chemistry. Well, they don't. That's why it was funny. But they, they like you need chemi- you need chemistry like as two actors playing off each other. Ah, not romantic chemistry. Gotcha. So I don't like, and it kind of works when they're themselves, and because Giles is really stuffy and Anya is a space cadet, it's and that's, super blunt. It doesn't like it doesn't offend me, but here I just like it didn't. It wasn't gelling for me. Okay. Um, That's fair. I thought their lack of chemistry worked for the scene because they weren't supposed to have it. Like, you're, you're supposed no, to... No, I get that, but, like, I, I... If they had chemistry... If the actors had chemistry together here, they would be fighting a lot harder, you know? Right. But I think that was the point. <laughs> that they don't... They can't even get it up enough to fight right. Right. So, let's cover... <laughs> um... Let's see. Anya and Giles have a fight because, like, they're fighting off demons, and then also she discovers the plane ticket. Well, no. They're fighting because Anya's being a dick. Yeah, Anya's being a dick. Anya's being a dick, and nothing Giles Giles is trying to be accommodating to his future bride, and that leads to chaos and bunnies. Right. But mostly bunnies. And bunnies are fine. They were never really in danger until, like, the big hulking beasts started happening. Um, but no, it turns out Anya was being a dick and, and Giles was being a doormat and that's not going to work out for anybody and they figure it out. Yeah. It was boring kind of. Yeah. But a little funny. I do like how they keep bringing back the bunny phobia. Okay. Um, Buffy and Spike or Joan and Randy go outside to fight the, the demons and they realize that Randy is a vampire. Yep. And that's also fun. But then it's just fighting and doesn't really go anywhere. Yeah, and then the the four in the sewer. Who did they run into down there? Other random vampires. Yeah, other random vampires. They kill them. There's some more chemistry between Tara and Willow. Lots of chemistry between Tara and Willow. Yeah. Those are actors that have chemistry. Yeah, they do. And then the, the, the crystal breaks. And then the crystal breaks. And the whole shady pile of bullshit's revealed. Yep. And this was like, yeah, I'm I'm really impressed with, uh, God, what's her name? Amber. Amber Benson. Amber Benson's acting because she does she does a lot in this episode just with her face. Yeah, she is made of face uh-huh. in this one. She's and doing she's doing really well, and I think like she was really practicing her hurt betrayal look, and then her her stoic I've got something to do look. Right. Yeah. And so then we have the silent breakup, which is a lot more awkward than the spoken breakup. It wasn't silent. There was a stirring ballad by Michelle Branch. I'll have you know. (laughs) Goodbye to you. Oh, yeah. Shit. And I've had so many breakups where I just played that and cried. For you listeners in the future, she sang the whole damn thing and I edited it out. (laughs) So thank you. (laughs) Send him money. (laughs) Speaking of money. I do know all of the words, guys. I can do this at any time. 
Uh, it, God, it was so... God, the, the early aughts was so heavy. It's, of all the things I believed in. Here's a song exactly about what's going on. No subtlety. Feel this way. I don't trust you to have the right emotions. I'm okay with it in this one instance. At least it's not Spielberg, man. <laughs> okay. He's so heavy-handed with pulling your strings. But... Yeah, I felt like that was that worked for me. It worked for me then. It works for me now. Fuck right. you if you don't like it. So now we have the giant fucking breakout. Yes, and they kind of underplayed it. Yeah, <laughs> they kind of did. They blended it with Giles taking off again, and they just had her leaving. And Don's upset, but pretty much you just see Willow crying on the bathroom floor. Mm-hmm. But not even crying, just looking like, wow, I fucked up. Not even realizing how bad this fucking is. It's, uh, and here's my problem, is I know Willow is not thinking I fucked up. I know Willow is thinking I got caught. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because that's what an addict does. Exactly. So, episode two. I got caught doing this thing that's perfectly justifiable in my head. Yeah. Episode two is about Buffy and Spike having sex so hard that the house comes down. So, I've done that. And yes, it's just like that. Okay. You know how you haven't done it? How? Through vaginal penetration. I'll have you know that I was being heartily penetrated, just not with a penis. Just, that wasn't all you were getting, I'm willing to bet. No, it really was. We we took down a wall in a house with sex. Okay. We literally did. (laughs) I'm I'm just frustrated that it never shows Spike playing with her clit. Oh, yeah, because, like, yeah, um... Because boy girl sex is depicted in movies is just fantasy. Yeah, and uh, like I saw someone on Twitter is like goes, Duh, I'm a woman in a movie and I can come through vaginal penetration only. Yeah, okay, guys, we're just gonna do a quick little run through right here, right now. Probably only about fifteen percent of women can come through vaginal penetration only. Most of us have to lend a hand at some point in order to have an orgasm. Right. And it could be your hand, it could be their hand, it could be an electronic hand, meaning vibrator by a pocket rocket, fellas. Um, But your lady will be 100% more satisfied if you pay attention to more than just thrusting your hard cock into her. Right. Because that shit is not what I know porn teaches you that's that's how it works, but that's... Oh, and pussy eating takes time. Yeah. It's not like this 30 seconds and then they're wet and and then that's all they need. No. Pussy eating, if they don't come at least once, you're doing it wrong. Unless they have an inability to come through that method, which is a thing. But, like, seriously, put a lot of effort into it. They will thank you. Also, work out your tongue. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to not just need strength, but endurance. Right. Also, it's not a pork chop. Be gentle. This has been your PSA from a lesbian. Yes. We learn the things we learn about the female anatomy. Now, sometimes you really do just want to feel, like, filled up and thrusted in. And that's cool. But if you want to make her come. Yeah. Anymore. I feel like Spike would need to be doing a lot more here. Um, I feel like that was off camera because you can't show that in prime time. I don't know. It's, it's, I, and I'm not mad at this show. I'm just mad at the idea that has sunk in so hard that that's all it takes. Yeah. It, you can't even hit a G-spot with a dick, man. The thing's not prehensile. What if then I wouldn't be gay. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) Maybe I still, I probably would still be gay, but I wouldn't be as gay. Right. So, yeah, I I took some notes in case I ever have to eat a pussy. So. We'll get some mangoes. We'll do a workshop. Really? That'd be great. Okay. We totally could. I don't like mangoes. Can we use peaches? Okay. Peaches will still work. It's the right consistency. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so Buffy and Spike fuck in this one. Yep. Um, what else happens? Uh, we have Willow going to... Willow, um, cures for Amy of Rat Hood. Oh, that's right. Amy's back, guys. Um, 
Am I happy with Amy's back or not? Well, she's an enabler, and that's a problem. Uh, it's my problem with Amy is like she was in high school. Yes. Um, if she's if she knows where to find burnout stuff like Rask. Uh-huh. Um, I don't feel like she would. I feel like she would have dropped out long ago. Um, Amy was already on a fucking dark ass path when we met her. Okay, so let's recap Amy. For yes, just let's a recap minute. Amy because it's been like. It's been a full ass year since I've seen Amy on screen. Right. So remember, and that's our year. For them, it's been three years. Yeah. Anyway, so remember the first time we see Amy, we don't actually meet Amy. We meet her mom inhabiting her body because right. she fucking body swapped her. Mm-hmm. Right. So Amy has been learning magic at her mother's knee since infancy. And her mom was a big old bitch. So that she gets swapped back out and her mom gets turned into a trophy. Fine. Cool. Whatever. We meet Amy again a little bit later on, and we find out that Amy's turned into a witch. Cool. That's, like, what Amy was going to do anyway, because the whole race that way thing. But we also find out that Amy's not necessarily a white witch. Like, she's not a white hat witch. She's a gray hat witch or a black hat witch at best. Mm -hmm. Um. And we have that whole episode where Joyce and the other mothers of Sunnydale try to burn any witches at the Right, day. but that wasn't her. So where where have we seen Amy doing shit that she shouldn't be doing? Amy wasn't doing anything really bad. She was just kind of experimenting with the gray morality right. with her magic, which is a slippery slope. And then she spends three years as a rat. So do we know that she was into the drugs aspect of magic when she was in high school? No, there's nothing to fucking point to that. That's why I hate that fucking episode. Okay, that's fair. There, like, this comes from literally nowhere. Right. And, and is incongruous. There's, you know who they could have run into? That little goth twerp that was the third member of their coven. In oh, school. yeah. That's that a, would have been. A, yeah, like, if she, like, went to her favorite diner or some shit and ran into that asshole and he was like, Dude, it's like I if they found were, the next level. If they, if they come back from the bronze and they're like, hey, was that you? And he's like, hey, was that you two? And they're like, yeah, but we're totally burned out. And he's like, oh, dude, you should try this. Yeah, that would bridge the entire thing. And, and it would make, make Amy's, Amy's addict's behavior later, breaking in and stealing things, make a lot more sense. Yeah, because, I mean... In showtime, it does. It seems like it's been weeks, but if you actually pay attention, it's been two days, guys. Yeah. Willow got high once and is suddenly like hardcore an addict. Right. She's she's acting like someone who's been an addict for months. Yeah, and and I'm, she has been, but not on this level and not in this flavor. I'm remembering that cartoon anti drug special now, where like they had all the cartoon characters like the. Like Ducktales and mm-hmm. I think GI Joe and Winnie the Pooh and like they all got on to like don't smoke weed guys you're gonna die yeah yeah this is some serious reefer madness bullshit oh yep. yes you try reefer once and suddenly you're a reefer fiend and you're raping and killing and pillaging and you're Viking or something I don't yeah. know point being that's not how drugs work drugs are insidious oh my god guys I just I just I had had this memory suppressed so long. What happened? Oh my god. I actually went to a Christian haunted house <gasps> when I was in high school. Tell me everything. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so excited. All right. So you go into this room uh-huh. and there's like, there's this chubby girl and she's like sitting down and he's like, and her boyfriend's like, hey, do you want to get high? And she's like, I don't know. I heard that thing. Doesn't work very well. And he's like, no, you should try it. And he, like, pushes her down and gives her some weed. <laughs> and then you go to the next room, and then it's like, I think it was supposed to be her sister, who's got, like, pregnant and got a black eye and shit, and she's all strung out, and she's like, ah, and she's killed her boyfriend and shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens the next day. It's like, oh, my God, I, I fucking burst out laughing in the middle of it. <laughs> I was like, also, get this, I was high as fuck. <laughs> 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 Oh God! I'd I forgotten that. Choices. Oh my God! Why did I not remember that until now? Because I bring out the best in you. Oh my God! So yeah. <laughs> Can we do that? Can we search out Christian haunted houses to get high and then go anymore? in? 
I think they do. I mean, I think I, they just don't do it in LA. Uh, yeah, that's oh, probably fair. You know what? Are we going to Rancho Cucamonga? We might, but we might also next year do a fake Christian haunted house. And like try to lure Christians to our for real haunted house. Okay, now now you're scaring me, honey. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you, Amy? <laughs> <laughs> See, all this gray morality is really rubbing off on me. It goes like... back to that tofu discussion. But yeah, uh, you you act like what you see. Anyway, point being, do you know what I you know what I would do? What I would do a haunted house for uh, Christian teenagers who are like. Finally getting away from their their parents and being able to celebrate Halloween. Because I remember the kids who really wanted to celebrate Halloween but couldn't because their parents would fucking disown them. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because Halloween's the best. So I would, I, like, instead of doing, like, let's have a Christian haunted house and freak the fuck out of them instead, I would say, let's have a Christian, like, prayer group meeting specifically for teenagers and they can come and, like, actually have a Halloween party. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the we're going to other... have wholesome fun. And it's like, no, nah, we're going to watch Slasher Fix and, like, decorate. And we're going to fucking bob for apples, and we're going to go fucking trick-or-treating. And that's why, like, I do not yeah. mind. I, I it's will It's going to be wholesome Halloween, but they get to have it, fuckers. Right. I've, I've, I always give candy to the teenagers who are trick-or-treating because oh, yeah. I remember, like, there were a lot of my contemporaries who could not go trick-or-treating until they were teenagers because they're... Uh, parents were these psycho Christians and were like, no, you can't play Dungeons and Dragons. You can't have heard the word Harry Potter. You can't, uh, you can't go trick or treating. So. Yeah. I've known those people too. I give candy to teenagers just because a, I don't want them to egg my house mm -hmm. and B I was 14 and still trick or treating because you know, it's fun. And if I'm trick or treating, I'm not out, you know, pillaging or getting pregnant mm. or doing drugs or, torturing animals or any of the other things that bored teenagers do do that yeah they do all those things um so like why not yes i will give you candy and you're amused for a few hours and that's a good thing why why i don't know hey money you want to go and see that stevie nicks drag cover band this weekend i can't bitches that is a very specific event, and it sounds tailor-made to just you and me, but I gotta do some shopping this weekend. Shopping? You have subscription services for everything. You get your food, your clothes, your underwear, and your dildos in a box every month. What else could you possibly need? I I just finished Harry Potter a couple months ago, so now I need some Harry Potter-themed stuff, and I want to decorate my man cave with some suitably dorky accoutrement. But I don't want to support some fucking child labor or NBC Universal Shineheart. So that means I gotta go on eBay and Etsy for a whole fucking day to find the stuff made by people who actually like this stuff instead of this franchise brand managed horseshit. Oh, dude, I've got the thing for you. You need Accio Box. I'm not gonna say that because that's gonna summon the litter box to my hands and that is gross. No, 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 no. AccioBox.com. Every month you get handmade, hand-curated Potter swag made by fans for fans out of love. Really? Actually, I don't have a pithy comeback to that. That sounds pretty cool. What do I get? Oh, you get three to five quality handmade items for just $39.99 a month. $39.99 a month? I spend more than that on conditioner. Yeah, you do, you vain son of a bitch. So, after you're done washing your fucking hair... Head on over to AccioBox.com, that's A-C-C-I-O Box.com, and use the promo code UNSPOILED to get 10% off your order, you cheap bastard. Well, alright, where can I look at this stuff before I actually throw down my credit card numbers? Check out their Instagram, at the AccioBox, and on Facebook. Alright, alright, I'm sold. Prep the flu network, I'm coming down this weekend. AccioBox.com. Magic. Delivered. I really liked the scene at the bronze, though. Yeah, where that they're was, just playing with people. Yeah, and like, and at first I was like, guys, consent. But then I'm like, oh, you're 21. One of you is 18. Mm -hmm. Because you've been a rat. Emotionally. Three. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're 21. And so they're not emotionally mature. Mm -hmm. Their frontal lobes have not fused. And also, they're both in a really bad place. And people are fucking with them. People are totally fucking with them. Yeah. And so... They're not going to take it anymore. And that's fair. Yeah. But it's when they start fucking with people who didn't start shit. Yeah. Like, like Amy 
pulling that girl over for Willow and Willow being like, nah, dude, that was the right answer. Good job, Willow. Yeah. But also, like, why did Amy think that was okay? I Because that woman's girlfriend was pissed. I, I, I understand. I understand why Amy would think that. Because Amy is incredibly stunted. Uh, like, remember who her mother was. Okay. So other people aren't people? She She's a never, little bit sociopathic? She, well, there's also, she has never been in the real world. Mm, so, uh, Willow has been to college. Yeah. Amy has not. This is true. So, Amy has, the only other people that have ever been in Amy's life are her absentee father, her shitty-ass mother, and the Cordelia cr- the crew. Mm, yeah. So, why would she think that other people matter? That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I can't argue that. So, um... Also, she's surprisingly progressive about Willow's gay. Yeah, I really, like, the part where the guy called Willow Ellen, and guys, that was a big insult in the early aughts. You don't even know. Do you remember when Ellen was the only gay reference that straight people knew? Yes. Holy shit, man. It was the dark ages, and you don't even know it. The 90s were bad, y'all. It was, like, seriously, I couldn't come out to my family, you guys. And my family's full of lovely people. But I couldn't tell them I was gay because they disowned me. That's what the 90s was. Yep. Anyway, so the early odds, they call her Ellen. And that moment where, where Amy and Willow just exchange a look, and they don't even have to talk. They yeah. haven't known each other very well for very long. But it's just like, oh, yeah, this is fucking happening. Part of me is hoping that they forgot to unspell these two. And they're just go-go dancers forever. Well, not forever, but, like, until they pass out, the spell actually wears off, so. That'd be fun. Yeah. I didn't like the implied homophobia. Mm. I, I, using... Go-go dancing is inherently gay. That's not what, that's not what I'm arguing. What I'm arguing is, like, I'm okay with using uh, a homophobe's homophobia against them. Okay. So, like, I'm, I'm not okay with it. I'm less, I'm less annoyed by it than... Okay, that, I feel much better about that. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Because, like, literally, the, the only word out of this guy's mouth was a gay slur. As, because that was the only gay slur he knew. <laughs> so... Oh, yeah, it's really hard to find slurs against lesbians. <laughs> it's like, what, are you gonna go to Home Depot? There's like, a D well, word. Yes, I am. Uh, yeah, there's the D word, but that's pretty much all we got. Yeah. Like, everything else is about, oh, a carpet muncher. It's like, yeah, it's delicious. You should I try it. I forgot that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they're all sex-based, and it's like... Hey, y'all, I know, like, don't use the D word. Don't. <sighs> it's, so, our, it's our word. Yeah. And, like, I know a lot of and you are listening. And the F word. Don't use, do not use faggot. And I'm... I am and a, don't use dyke. And don't use cocksucker. Ooh, Yeah. So like I, there's some there's some people I'm very close to who have had to like oh yeah who have had to have that awakening moment when they're like oh yeah that is that is a super homophobic thing to say. Mm-hmm. Whenever and, like, my mom really wanted to piss off my dad, she'd call him a cocksucker. Yeah. So yeah, guys, just don't do it. Like you could you can use the word if people have thrown rocks and hit you with sticks while saying it at you. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. You you have to bleed for it a little bit. Yeah. But, like, just don't. Yeah. So. Pretty much. Yeah. So, anyway. yeah. Uh, what? It's Buffy and Spike have sex in the house. This is where Spike... Oh, we forgot about the museum. The museum? Yeah, those three chuckle fucks break into the museum. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, but it does, it does uh. matter as far as Spike um, figuring out that Buffy came back wrong. Yes, that I, I honestly think that's the most important part of this episode. It's not the sex. It's not the mm-hmm. Willow goes on a bender. It's that Spike figures out that he can hit Buffy now. Mm-hmm. He can't hit other humans. I mean, he goes through a full troubleshooting montage almost, right. trying to figure out why he can hit Buffy. And at first he thinks he can just hit humans again. Ah, oh, damn thing shorted out. Awesome. And it's like, nah, that's not it. Okay, something's wrong with the chip. It's shortened out in intermittent times. Nope, chip's functioning fully. Yeah. Buffy came back wrong. Right. 
And that was that was that was actually a Buffy and Spike fight. I was here for the two of them arguing. I didn't like the punching. Yeah. Because. Well, he is evil. Yeah. And she just likes to. Hit I just him. like it's uh, when you do it that way when they're having an important conversation and punching each other. It's just so obvious that the like they're not actually making contact, and it's like, can yeah. you guys just argue? I think that. Buffy says some shit to Spike that's kind of hit worthy. Yeah, Buffy is so fucking mean to him, and yes, he doesn't deserve better. He's a creature of, of evil, but Buffy should do better. Yeah, it, it it is on the. But again, Buffy's twenty one. It is the burden of the the side of good to take the higher ground. Mm. It is our burden. That's why we don't get to play the games the Republicans get to because. Our job is to take the higher ground, and it's hard. It's right. fucking hard, and it doesn't always pay off, but it's our job. And she's not doing it with Spike, and I get it, but I'm not going to have any sympathy when he hits her. Right. I mean, it's... I just, like, I thought it broke the flow of conversation as well. Oh, yeah, totally. So, it they fight, to be there, the but, house comes down. Well, okay, so you're kind of fast-forwarding a little bit, because they have this fight a couple of times... Like, they have to go through a couple different scenery changes before they get to the broken house. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Like, they have this fight all over town, and it's mostly argument. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't actually get super physical till the end when they're in that broken house and can really go at it. Figuratively and figuratively. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, But... The whole... Hmm. I don't even know where I want to go with this. There's just so much. Buffy keeps kissing Spike uh-huh. because she wants to feel something. Yeah. Right? Because right now she can't feel anything because she's traumatized and in shock. Long-term PTSD. And she feels something with, with Spike. Sometimes it's disgust. Sometimes it's a hot lady boner. Sometimes it's God only knows what. But she feels something. Mm -hmm. But the fact that she's feeling something with him pisses her off so she abuses him. Yeah. And that's just not okay. And so I really don't... They're both so wrong. They're both so wrong in this entire scenario... But it's really hot, so I don't mind. But seriously, they are the worst to each other. They're both so wrong. He is, like, he's kind of rapey. He, like, won't let her leave. He keeps stopping her body with Mm -hmm. his hands from doing stuff like walking away. And that's, that's, ah. But the thing is, it keeps working. Like, every time he's like, no, don't leave. Come back here. She, like, ends up fucking him or making out with him or something. She keeps rewarding his behavior. And at this point, I want to say it's bad writing, but I've totally seen women do that. And men. I've seen men do that, too. This is a thing people do, and it drives me nuts. Right. And, yeah, it's not a not a rubric for a healthy relationship, but... No. But these two are just kind of at rock bottom, so... Yeah, they're both in a place of despair. They're both bottoming out, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, and then there's the fight. And And then there's the fucking. The house comes down. Yeah, it does. And the episode's over. So, okay, so we've been talking for almost an hour. I kind of need to rehydrate. How do you feel? Also rehydrate. All right, guys, we're going to pause. Not that you actually have to wait any amount of time, but... Yeah, we'll be back before you know it. All right, see you in a minute. All right, y'all, we are back. And we are on the third episode of all of this bullshit. So, <laughs> so much. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not like, feeling this episode, guys. And we've already kind of discussed why. So, uh, yeah. Let's like we've we've kind of discussed the addiction thing to death. So let's start on the stuff we haven't discussed, like Buffy and Spike having another argument. Mm-hmm. After that's exactly the same as the two episodes before it. Uh-uh. Yeah, because neither of them are wrong. Right. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> Buffy's like, you disgust me. And he's like, I know, but you keep kissing me. And I like that because I'm in love with you. So 
what? <laughs> we we didn't we failed to discuss that Tara brought um Dawn home. And oh, they yeah. fell asleep on watching TV. Yeah, they they did a bonding day because Tara thinks it's very important that she maintain her relationship with Dawn. And I agree, because Dawn hasn't got a lot of like strong feminist role models right, right. now. She's got, you know, Super Sister, who she fights with a lot, and Willow, who hasn't got a ton of time for her. Tara's been the mom in her life. Yeah. So Tara's making an effort to maintain that relationship, and that's awesome. Go yeah. Tara. Um, you'd think with three women in the house, you wouldn't be short on moms. You would think that, except that everyone is a child. Right. So, um, yeah, and they wake up in the morning, and neither Buffy nor Willow has made it home. Yeah. Which, like, this is this is kind of why I was talking about Dawn needs to age up a little bit. In that, like, I get that they live in a dangerous world and someone not showing up could mean they're dead. But at the same time, she's a fucking teenager. Which she explicitly calls out. She doesn't need to be watched all the time. Yeah. So. And at her age, I wasn't watched, like, ever. Mm -hmm. But at the same time... She shouldn't just be a latchkey kid who comes home to an empty house that is empty all night. Right. Someone should have come home and no one coordinated. Someone should have called. Yeah. They were both having their little mini breakdowns at the same time. And I get it. That happens. And thank God Tara was there. Well, not even thank God. Because she didn't, like, Dawn wouldn't have died if she was alone for a night. Right. But it's still shitty. Yeah. It's still shitty and would have, and Dawn is just now recovering from the thing where she felt like no one cared about her and she wasn't real. Right. So she still needs that reinforcement so that she doesn't just think that she's a key. Mm hmm. Look, your blender. <laughs> oh, by the way, why doesn't she still have an angst about that? I mean, I feel like she's had a whole summer to deal with it and then the, like, losing her mom and her sister. Okay, yeah. It's like, she has bigger problems than not being corporeal all the time. Right. And it's the, the only person who could do anything about it is dead. Glory. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, That's everyone's fair. explicitly let her in and demonstrated that they still care for her. Yeah, but like, falling down on that job, if you don't like, keep keep repeating that and mm -hmm. reinforcing that message, she'll forget again and start cutting herself. So. Okay. So I say that Tara did um, an important job that night. All right. So, yeah, Tara, like, got Tara's the best. Yeah. Like, I, I kind of love her. Yeah. So, um, she there's, is solidly the best. There's pancakes and Tara reassuring them, and then Buffy shows up, and Buffy's like, oh, sorry, I was dealing with a thing. And then Willow shows up with Amy, and oh, sorry, I was... All hungover and looking just fucked. Right. And Amy's like, we did so much fucking magic. Yeah. That was, that was really, that was really good. That was great. <laughs> and Will, and Amy just thinks she's just talking too much and everyone hates her. But like, no, you're explicitly bringing up why these two broke up. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we did a lot of magic and it was super irresponsible and amazing and fun. Yep. So. Let me talk about how irresponsible it was really fast. I, I kind of loved Amy at this point, not later. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, and so Dawn seems to be taking it in stride. Tara has to awkwardly leave, and it's like, you still have some stuff. I'll get it later. Yeah, I can't look at you right now because I'm so mad. Right, and, like, we can't have a fight because we're no longer together. Yeah, we can't have a fight because I don't have any right to fight with you anymore, and also it's bad for Dawn. Right. But... I'm so mad at you. You don't care about me because you care about magic more. Yeah. Did you fuck her? Because I totally would have thought, oh my god, they totally fucked. I, I, Amy always had some, like, bisexual tendencies, as far as I'm concerned. Like. You think that about everyone. I, you don't hang out with Willow and gay goth dude in high school and not be at least bi-curious. Yeah. Yeah, the curiosity doesn't make a gay. Sure. I feel like she like she dated a gay, remember? Did she, she dated Larry. There was a oh. whole thing because of Larry. <laughs> oh, God. Because Larry's gay and dead. You can't get homosexuality by heterosexual injection. <laughs> so, um, yeah, 
And this is where we get uh, Buffy is just not dealing with anything. Giles is gone. What are Xander and Anya up to? Um, were they doing anything this episode? They were... Oh, Anya was not paying attention to uh, the books and to searching for the ice monster because she was wedding planning and oh. reading bridal magazines. That was their only input in this entire episode. Right. And I kind of think Anya has a right to get excited. I think Anya also has a right to be right that it wasn't a fucking demon. It was these assholes and some science right. that, like, seriously, no, no points of this entire thing point to monsters, and yet they go back to the monster books. Anya's right. She gets to flip through some bridal magazines. Yeah. Because um, she's right. Now, if she was wrong, I would be cussing her out right Also, now. she's been waiting a thousand years to have an actual ass wedding. Seriously, she had one relationships before this, this and it is, made her a vengeance demon. This is one uh, situation where I don't think Xander has any input on how the wedding goes because Anya has a lot more time invested in this. He gets some input. It's his first wedding too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's all they're up to. But yeah, she gets to be excited, and that's a thing. And yeah, everything else is about. Willow going really, really off the deep end with her... Which happens addition. way too fast, but we've already discussed that. Yeah, so. it happens in a day, but whatever. Um, Willow decides to make it up to Dawn that she completely flaked and bailed mm -hmm. by them having a little bonding day, much in the same way that Tara and, bon and Dawn just happened to have. Mm -hmm. But Willow fucks it up with her addiction... And then gets them chased by demons that she summoned but didn't remember summoning because yeah. she was high. And then crashes a car and almost gets them eaten. Yeah, and it's like, this is just so boilerplate away, like, oh, there was a car accident because she was high. It's straight up Reaper Madness, you guys. Like, seriously, there are scenes that are torn from the pages. Right from the headlines. I actually have not seen Reefer Madness. Should um, we watch that? Should we get really high and watch it? Skip the original Reefer Madness and do instead Reefer Madness, the musical. It has Kristen Bell in it. Uh, and singing and dancing. No, it's a campy delight. Okay. Seriously, it is the best. Sure. It has Alan uh, coming in it. <laughs> <laughs> At first I was going to... Giggity! At first, I was going to be Alan Rickman, but it's like, no, that's wrong. That's the wrong British guy. I don't, like, I kind of want to experience, like, the sincerity that, to laugh at, you know? It's not funny. That's the problem. The original Reefer Madness, I tried to watch it because mm -hmm. people are like, oh, it's hilarious. And it's not funny because they're still doing it. It's like The Room. I haven't seen The Room, but the I've room heard enough of The Room. fucking terrible. I've heard it's so bad it's good, except that it's not even good. But people that's watch it not anyway my problem with it is it's badness. it's like a super like one like this is a the room is about a guy who is whose girlfriend just decides to change her mind that she's no longer into him and starts cheating on him. Okay. Right? So, and they're hoping you don't do the math that she's twenty two and they've been dating for five years. <laughs> Yeah. Um, no. And it's painted. She has every right to do whatever she wants to that guy. And it's painted, and like, there's. Especially, well, okay, only if he's older. If they were the same age, then probably not. No, he's, he was in his 40s, so. Oh, God, so he was, like, in his late 30s when they started dating and she was 17. Fuck that guy. He needs to die. Right. But there's also, like, her mom explicitly says, no, he's your meal ticket. Stay with him. You know, mm -hmm. so, like, it's. What a great mom. Clearly, this is about Tommy Wiseau processing a breakup right. that happened in his life. Yes. And it's like nobody sees that this man is so... Like, one, there's the age thing. And two, like, she accuses him of hitting her mm -hmm. for no fucking reason. And I'm kind of like, I'm stepping back and I'm like, wait a minute. Are you telling me that you went through a breakup and she accused you of hitting her, but you really didn't, you fucking liar? And like, so, and then there's the fact that the man was an abusive asshole to everyone. And we're all laughing and making him rich because he is literally bad at his only job. And it's just like, how can you enjoy 
something like this. Something that's so steeped in human misery. Exactly. And just and such a iPhone. fucking terrible person. Yes. So, where where the fuck, how the fuck did I get here? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. I don't either. Guys, but, but, I, I'm totally sober, I promise. You're not. But, yeah. okay, so, but here's the thing, though. I have never, ever in my entire life known a woman who lied about getting hit. Yeah, I don't, I haven't. And yet. I've had women who had every reason to lie about getting hit and say, Yes, he hit me as a way to justify getting out of a bad relationship for that was bad for other reasons. Mm -hmm. But they still didn't do it. Because once you cross that path, you can't go back and every woman knows it. Right. So. so yeah. Um, anyway, Willow, they decide to go to a movie. <laughs> and like, well, what just, else are you going to do in Sunnydale? You can't take her to the Bronx. I mean, it's just like she's going to go get high for God knows how long. Well, she thought it was going to be also, a quick stop. Also, this, like, I mentioned this when we were, because we actually watched this episode for the second time, because we watched it, like, six weeks ago, but, um, we were watching it in the break room at work. Yeah. And, like, guys, I really hate the term, like, strawberry, when referring to women. And mm -hmm. here's why. One, it's kind of a go-to where a bad guy will say, you taste like strawberries. <laughs> Because, like, they did it in fucking GoldenEye. They did it in every other thing. Like, your growth is like strawberries. And two, it's like, women don't taste like strawberries. Like, you've got to, you've got to, like, find some uh, feminine food that they taste like because <laughs> bodies are gross. And, and also, three, there's, uh, I, know, I heard it on Dexter. I don't know if it's a real ass thing, but... Um, wait, like, a strawberry is a term for a woman who uses sex to get her drugs. I've never heard that. I've only heard it on Dexter, so I don't know I if don't, it's a real-ass thing. Maybe it's only a thing in Florida, or maybe it's not even a thing, but I, I've never I, heard that. Yeah, but and, it's, it's like, brought it up, and I'm like, this is clearly a very, uh, drug ish thing, and... Oh, yeah, they're, they're really heavy-handed with the one-to-one uh, comparison to a drug den. Right. Like, and then, like, what is Rask getting out of this? And I don't, like... I, I think he's siphoning magic off them. Okay. I, I kind of can't be mad at Rask because he's giving people exactly what they want and it seems like they're having a very good time. And he's just old. providing a service. Right. right. And they're, just like, you know, they're not getting... He's not killing them. He's not beating them. He's not extorting them for money. He's not, there are no children he is dealing to. Yeah, I just have a problem with dr drug dealers in general when you know it's a dangerous drug. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, but it's only dangerous because Willow goes and fucking drives high. <laughs> That's true. But if you're going to, it's, okay, it's like my friends that do ketamine. Uh-huh. They go to places where they will have someone take care of them after yeah. they have done ketamine. Uh-huh. And we'll make sure they don't, like, you know, die in a K-hole. Um, and that's how they choose to manage their drugs. He wasn't providing the management half of the service. I don't know. Like, they were there while they were high. Oh, yeah. He partied with them for a while, but then he she... He didn't seem high. It felt then like... she left. Yeah, then she left. Was she still high? It felt like she was just coming down. Um, yeah. Her pupils... Where, in fact, she didn't have people. She didn't have anything. Her eyes were completely black. Okay. Well, she was high as fuck. It's 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 hard for me to to really hate Rask when his uh when his crime here is not taking care of her long enough. As the child of heroin addicts, I can hate him just fine. You are free to do so. I just can't get it up for hating the man. Well, because he's one of the like he's you don't know he's not I'm eating any kittens. <laughs> Actually, he is, because he's, he's getting something out of it. That's what the whole you taste like strawberry thing was about. First of all, he's tasting her magic, not her womanhood. Mm -hmm. And second of all, she has red hair. That's why she tastes like strawberries. Um, just to play devil's avocado for a second. But the point is, he is getting something out of it. He is siphoning some kind of force off her, and he's having a good time doing it. He's getting his rocks off. There's something happening here in which he is receiving something for this exchange. Otherwise, he wouldn't do it. Okay. 
Because no one makes people into drugged out zombies for free. Like, that's that's not a fun way to spend your time. Sure. Fine. Anyway. I mean, I, I, I totally feel you. I just, like... Don't care. <laughs> of all the terrible fucking beings we've seen in this thing, Rask is at the low end. No. Dealers are a problem. Like, that's the whole point of Breaking Bad. <laughs> Dealers are a problem. I thought the whole point of Breaking Bad was white men were terrible. That's true, but they also have terrible men of all races in Breaking Bad. Oh, that's Bad. very true. Like <laughs> all bald men are terrible. Let's... Yeah, like pretty much. Except for sure. Hank, but he's just he's just terrible at his job. Hank was <laughs> terrible in a lot of ways too. He was just a different flavor of terrible. Yeah. Anyway, back to Buffy. So yeah, moral of the Willow... story: men are the worst. Willow gets high. Drives high to escape the demon that she, she summoned while high, high. <laughs> and crashes the car and fucks up everything. And everyone knows now that she has a problem because she lost control in public. Right. Um, this was way too fast. She should have lost control in private and had to cover it up several times, but mm-hmm. they were on a budget. So yeah. whatever. Anyway, everyone acknowledges that Willow has a problem now and... Okay, good. Everyone's on board. Buffy is still kind of trying to justify it because she has guilt over bumping uglies with the bumpy ugly. Right. And that's fair. I've totally done that. I have totally been like, no, this person's problem isn't as bad because I do a similar thing that I don't want to acknowledge. Yeah. Um, Do we want to talk about the scene with, like, her summoning Spike to get his help? Uh oh when she has to hunt down yeah. Rask. Uh I think we can cover it quickly. Sure. Because like there wasn't a lot there. It was like I need your help, but I'm not gonna acknowledge that I actually need you because then I'd be needing you. Ugh. And then he's like, You need me, mean or neener. Also, this spike was very passive aggressive in the like look at my dick. Look at my dick. Are you looking at my dick? Stop looking at my dick, bitch. <laughs> Except totally look at my That's dick. That's totally a move I've pulled. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, yes, I'm naked. The, it's no big deal. I'm just naked. The thing is, that comes back to like old school Spike as he was in season two. And that's yeah. what the Spike I want to see. Yeah, this whole more... libified Spike where he's like trying to care about shit pisses me off. Because that's yeah. not who he is as a person. Um... So, yeah, he's the one who helps her locate it. Um, yeah. Willow and, yeah. And Dawn. And Dawn. Um, and then there's that conversation in her mom's bedroom. I'm um, blanking on it. Remind that's where me. they like uh, they talk about, Willow's like, yeah, I'm done doing magic. I don't. And she sort of says, like, if I'm not, if I'm using magic, I'm not me. Oh, yeah, where... Who would you have, Super Willow or regular old boring yeah. Willow? And you're right. There's a lot that goes on in this. And, like, I get why Buffy does what she does and sort of understands and sticks by Willow, even though she's fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, I still am kind of mad at her. She's like, she shows like, get your shit. Go to whatever re- <coughs> rehab you can find. Watcher's rehab. Yeah. And uh, I'm moving Tara in. And the thing is, Buffy's not equipped for that. She's never yeah, had to deal not. with addiction in her life. Right. But, like, it's this is, in this scenario, Tara belongs in the house, not Willow. Well, Tara is the, Tara, Tara is the bigger asset in the house, but she doesn't belong there. The only person that wants her there, for realsies, is Dawn. I, I see that, but I think there's also value in... Tara, like, given all the shit that's gone down, mm. uh, that Tara is the one who gets to keep the, the friends in this divorce. I see the value in that, too. But that's not how friends work. Okay. It isn't. I mean, think about it. When I broke up with she who must not be named, the one who I liked who didn't like me, um... Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Her roommate, the beautiful boy. Yeah. Totally sided with me in the entire relationship. But who kept him? Yeah, but she wasn't 
like, she wasn't getting high and setting fire to the apartment. That's right. She was just emotionally abusing me. Yeah. So, I mean, she was emotionally abusing you. You're gone from the scene. Yeah. She was emotionally abusing um, her best, her awesome trans best friend's niece. I'd be like, get the fuck out. You can come in. Yeah. But, so, here's the thing. No one in the house was willing to accept that Willow had a problem. Yeah. Much in the same way people don't accept that a lot of alcoholics have a problem when they are really charismatic while they're drunk. It's like, yeah, we have a great time at parties, and yeah, he likes to party a lot. When did Buffy fun. get this fucking heavy, guys? Uh, Dealing with depression and addiction and breakups I've been and trying lesbian to t- cold wars. I've been trying to tell you that it's an amazing show this for years now. This is not fun. Like, where's my praying mantises and my <laughs> hyena people? And before when it was praying mantises and hyena people, you were like, there's nothing to chew on. You're just never That happy. is not what I said. I, I really enjoyed those because they were so much fun. Yeah, but the other it was when they were trying to take them serious. It was when they were trying to take themselves too seriously that I had a problem with it. Well, now they're taking themselves seriously, but I think they're actually doing it well. Yeah, they're doing it well, but it's like I don't feel I don't feel better after watching this. I get that you're not here for this, but this. I I didn't say that. I did not say that. I want to be very clear. Okay. I did not say that. I just feel like here for this. I am here for this. I'm just like I don't feel better after walking away from this. You know. Well, it's not. I didn't feel better (laughs) after the Red Wedding. (laughs) It was still good television. Yeah. Well, you know, we've still got half a season left to get some shit resolved. So. Yeah. And so, okay, all this time we've been doing this, you've been like, ah, why do we even have a supervillain? We need to talk about these issues. And now we barely have, we don't have a supervillain. We have, you know, a token villain, Mm -hmm. the trio. And we're talking about the issues. This is legit what you've been asking for. This I'm not disagreeing time. with you. Like, I, I, this is good television. It's just like it's such a mood whiplash, and I'm like, I'm commenting on the fact, like, how the fuck did we get here? Remember when we were talking about the room, and we have no idea how we get there? How did we get from fucking hyena people to here? We had a musical interlude. <laughs> that was literally the last episode we watched was a musical episode. Yeah, so. but there was a lot of lead up, so a musical end. Ent- interlude kind of felt okay like we've been we've been doing this gradual evolution all this time and it works a lot better without glory like i gotta say like glory was a misstep for really kind of oblique reasons mm -hmm. like on paper glory should have worked but it didn't yeah um, I mean, we still got through it and stuff, but, like, they, they kind of threw shit at the wall and saw what stuck. I mean, to this day, I cannot believe that they threw Crusaders into the Buffy first. Like, that doesn't make any kind of fucking sense. Yeah. But we had them with their horses and long swords and fucking arrows, and we accept it because that's what had to happen to get us to here. Yep. Okay. So, those are our episodes, guys. Wait, I have a couple probing questions. Um, do okay. you think... Oh, we're doing predictions? We've got to... Okay. Do you think there's any hope for the willow Terror relationship? Because let's face yes. it, every lesbian we've known has broken up and gotten back together four okay. times before yes. they actually break and up. And here's why. This is not a uh, plot reason. This is a filmmaking reason. Okay. I don't think they could introduce another lesbian <laughs> into the show. In the time they have allotted. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Is there hope for... <sighs> Actually, you know what? I'm going to go with no. I okay. don't think there is. From what we've learned about Tara, this is this is an extinction-level event. Willow has already proven that uh, she can't... Be trusted. She can't be trusted, and the magic has a power over her, and, like... You don't, if you're dating an addict and they go to, um, and they go to rehab and come back clean, you still don't start that again. Mm. Right? Okay. Because they need to. At least not right away. The war, they need to know what the world looks like without this relationship. Yeah. And have so to So that they can to... value it properly. Exactly. And yeah, so 
um, from what I know, from what we've learned about Tara, I'm gonna say no. This relationship is over. Okay. Um, Unless she does another forgetting thing, but. Do you think that Willow be will be able to stay off the magic? No. Okay. I think, uh, like, we are too early in the season for Willow's uh, fuck-up arc to be over. Okay. Do you think that Buffy and Spike will continue to bang? Yes. Do you think that anything will come of that banging? I feel like they're going to bang till the end of the season, and they're going to have a breakup. And then Spike is going to be mopey for the rest of the run of the show. Okay. Um, I feel like, I feel like Spike's natural place, not in the span of his life, but in the, the way the show likes to have him mm -hmm. is mopey and alone and angry that he's mopey and alone. Mm. And getting off one liner. Right. Okay. Do you think we're going to continue to see Tara? No. I, I think she's going to be around for a bit, but. I think she's exiting stage right, and I hope that she stays gone, like Oz, mm -hmm. because I don't want her to end up like Miss Calendar, Miss yeah. Calendar, Miss Carpenter. Okay. Um, that's what I hope. Dead. For. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, um, she can have a Riley exit. I'm fine with that. Do you think that Giles will stay gone? No. Okay. Because like the show. We've, we've already had Giles gone, and he doesn't say gone. Like, they don't... The show does not know how to not have Giles. He seems pretty focused on saying gone. What would be an event that could bring him back? I don't know, but here's the problem. Who are the people in the cast who have left permanently? Oz. And? Miss Calendar. Riley. <laughs> and Riley. Oz and Riley are the only two who have left permanently. And, and both true. of them were because of breakups. Yeah. So I don't think this show knows how to get rid of someone other than a breakup. That's fair. Like, I don't think... They can't just move away and have it be like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, they did that with Cordelia, and now she's on fucking Angel. <laughs> You're right. She's the only one who got out. Right. And, they and keep she's still sucking here. sucking her back in. Right. Even Angel got away and then didn't, you know? Yeah. So Wesley got away and then didn't. And he wasn't even a main char main cast character. That's fair. So We haven't seen Faith again. Faith's in prison. I, I, Faith is not gone. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm looking at Jonathan and Larry and Amy and Faith and uh, who else? This show, surprisingly for its time, Mm. knows how to hold on to uh, other threats. And... <laughs> I kept telling you, man. I, I believed you. Um, yeah, like, we we don't know about, like, we don't have that guy who, like, Amy's mom. <laughs> so we still haven't dealt with that. <laughs> um, she was a trophy in a trophy case in the school that blew up. Yeah. I'm I've, pretty sure she's gone. <laughs> I've, it's, there's, at some point, someone's going to accidentally turn her back into a human. So if she's not in 20 pieces, she's dead. They blew up the trophy. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but like that, that was, that is definitely feels like something like they want faith to play a role at some point. Okay. Um, yeah. So any other okay. questions for me? I think that's it for now. All right. So, we're back, guys. I know that you just had an episode of Angel of Us that, like, we're sounding really weird because mm -hmm. that was six weeks ago, but... Yeah, we maybe pre-recorded that. Just so, saying. yeah, we're sorry that we're gone, but we had to do it, and, like, yeah, we're back now, and we're good. So, yeah. Um, just fair warning. I think we're gonna try a thing because, guys, we've got a commute. Oh, you guys do are not even prepared for our commute. Yeah, it's like an hour and a half each way. I've been doing it for three years. Right, which is why, like, I I always used to get salty. It's like, why are we starting fucking podcasting at ten p.m. Just like, because she needed that time to get collected. So, um, I have a new phone coming in the mail this week. We're gonna try 
a car podcast. And I know the audio quality is going to be even worse, but like, this is like, this is the bitches and money show. And the bitches and money show happens in the car too. (laughs) In fact, some of the best things we've ever encounters we've ever had with each other have been in a car. Right. So we're going to give that a shot. So I want you guys to be fair warning. Yeah. It is an experiment. Right. And, you know, we're going to try it out. If it doesn't work, we're probably going to be the first ones to admit it. Yeah. But, like, let's be honest. Like, time is valuable. And we don't have a lot of it. No, we don't. And we spend a lot of time together now. Right. So. (laughs) We need to maximize the efficiency of that time. Exactly. All right. So, like, let's say goodbye, motherfuckers. Bye. Bye.